Easter, which is also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Um, do we have any mothers or mothers-to-be out there in the pews? Hands up if you're a mother or a mother-to-be, or you ever wanted to be a mother. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to us all. We welcome any of our visitors with us today. Some information for you. We do not take up a collection during the Mass. There are boxes on the wall where you can place your donation. One over here, one over there, and that's an accident it wasn't stolen. But you can't use it, it's empty. <laughs> we have a custom in our parish. At the end of the final hymn, we all kneel and silently say three Hail Marys for the next one amongst us to be called home by God. The, flower, the Mother's Flower Day sale continues today out in the church side parking lot and there might be some baked goods left as well if you hurry. Mass in the Vineyard is back. Please join Father and Company at Lakewood Vineyard on Thursday this week, May 12, at 7pm. Details are in the bulletin. Please make sure your cell phones are in silent mode during the Mass. Somebody got very embarrassed at the last Mass. Our Mass intention for this Mass is Joan Specchio. For some mothers, this day can be tinged with sadness for loved ones who have passed already. And this prayer is for you. Do not weep for me today, just hold me in your heart. For although you cannot see me, we are never far apart. Your suffering, your anguish, block my love from reaching you. And although it is okay to mourn, his love will see you through. My prayer for you this Mother's Day is that you feel his grace and know our heart's desire, your peace, until you see his face. One day soon we will unite and see the beatific vision. No more will you be afraid or feel this earth's division. So instead of shedding tears today, or focusing on what's not here. Unite yourself with Christ, and you will find me there. So peace to you this Mother's Day. Rest in his warm embrace, where we will meet in just a while, through his unfailing grace. God bless you. Please join me in singing All Are Welcome, number 850.
were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth for peace to the people of the will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You must be the Heavenly Father. Have mercy on us. For you are Lord.
a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the lamb who is in the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to the springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Sometime around supper time, 
back home. Everybody did that. In fact, doing that, we all learned that we had a voice that would call us home. Oftentimes it was our mothers who made that call. We knew the sound of their voice. I have to admit it, sometimes I kind of ignored the voice. If I ignored the voice, when my father got home, he would make sure we knew the sound. He had a whistle. He whistled for us. We knew that whistle if we didn't make it home pretty quickly and we were in trouble. I'll leave it at that. Now, to understand that, how that voice is, even though they have crossed over, if I heard those voices today, the whistle or the voice of my mom, I would recognize it in a heartbeat. Okay? What about the voice of Christ? How do we recognize the voice of Christ in our lives? The prisoners I work with, I always ask them this question around this time of the year, and I said, I bet you you've heard the voice of Christ in your life. I bet you just before you got arrested or before you did something you weren't supposed to do, you heard that voice in there saying you need to leave. It's amazing how many heads start bopping when I say that, okay? We've all heard it. We may have forgotten it, but we have heard it because we're so used to putting it off to the side. The voice of Christ is always trying to reach out to us and speak to us. Now, St. Augustine tells us something very interesting about this. He says, there are those in the church that God does not have. And there are those outside the church that God does have. In other words, there are people who hear God's voice whether they're in church or not. It doesn't make us hear the voice, it just helps us realize there is a voice. But that voice is important. At communion time, we need to develop that voice. In other words, to listen. One of the things that we've done in our prayer life at a very young age is we've been taught prayer to ask God for things. That's important. But there's something much more important than that. It's to listen for God's reply. How often do we really listen to the Word of God penetrating us and coming to us? St. Clair of Assisi, who is at the same time as St. Francis of Assisi. She, is a, she was a mystic, she was a nun, she started an order, she helped people. She taught people how to hear and relate to Christ, how to relate to Him. Now, she is called the mirror mystic for a reason. She would train people to pay attention, to gaze upon the cross of Christ. As they would gaze, they would realize they were looking into a mirror. Okay? Now, I'm not talking about in the physical sense. I'm talking about in the spiritual sense. When we gaze upon the Christ, do we see a mirror reflection of ourselves? If we don't, we have things in the way of that. We have obstacles we have yet to face. We have to quiet ourselves and try to keep gazing. Now that gazing is necessary because it allows us to realize the cross is the only thing that matters. The cross is what takes us from personal individuals into the community of all believers in Christ. Jesus says, the Father and I are one. At his time in Gethsemane, he said, Father, I pray that they may all be one as you and I are one. We are called to be one in Christ. But we have difficulty with that because we like to point fingers at people saying, this one's doing it right, that one's not doing it right. Right. Reality is, is that we have to work on this person. We have to change this person to listen to Christ, to empty those things. St. Ignatius of Loyola gives us a very good prayer, but it's a dangerous prayer. It's a prayer that we agree to change things. This is the prayer that goes from asking God for things to allowing God to do us. In other words, we are allowing God to let us 
must be the prayer that someone else needs. Here's how the prayer goes. It's called the susupe. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will. All I have and call my own, you have given it all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours to do with what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. That prayer, I said it was dangerous. Why? Because we have to give up ourselves. We have to look into the mirror of the cross and see ourselves and give up every obstacle that is in the way of fulfilling the cross. You see, that cross isn't 2,000 years ago. It was handed on to the church to carry, to be part of. We are part of the cross of Christ. You see, when we get that, when we get we're part of this oneness in Christ, we develop a superpower. A superpower that changes the world. It's called love. God is love. He shares that love more abundantly with us, and we become more loving. That love can see through the walls of hearts that have been hardened. We can see the difficulties that people have and realize we have the answered prayer just to listen to them. That heart can also bring mercy to those who suffer. It can bring forgiveness to a heart that is weighed down. We are called to be the sheep that Jesus pastures, but we must know his voice. We must hear it and respond no matter what's in our way. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before the ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God.
leaders to work for peace between nations, especially Ukraine and Russia. We pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and all forms of ministry, that all who are called be willing and able to respond. We pray to the Lord. For all mothers, that they may that they be encouraged and supported as they live this special location. We pray to the Lord. For our parishes, that we may cherish all life as we support those in need. We pray to the Lord. For all those on our prayer lists, those in our prayer book of requests, and for the sick, to know God's love, comfort, and grace. We pray to the Lord. For Don Romeo, who died this week, and for Joan Specchio, for whom we celebrate this Mass, and for all who have died to receive eternal life, we pray to the Lord. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts,
first for mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord your God. It is to right in the just for giving in our salvation. Always in the air, we have given you thanks, Father, most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your way through whom you made all things, whom you set as your Savior and the Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bands of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are praying. <coughs>
affect that body to be in your presence and minister to you. How do we pray? Partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord our church, spread throughout the world and bring up the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, as our soul matan our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in our mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may make be heirs to eternal life and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Please join in our communion hymn, number 723, Shepherd of My Heart.
the 16th. It's a Monday at 5 p.m. If you want to help financially, put a notation for community table on your check when you uh, put it for the donation. Uh, second thing is we have several flowers left and baked goods across over here by the garage. Please stop by and help us with this sale to raise money for our church. Thank you. Let us pray. Look upon him as Lord, the kind of shepherd, and be pleased to settle up in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with your spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. May the Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. As we go forth, please join in singing number 685, How Can I Keep From Singing? 